Hey guys, so welcome to Wild and Basics. So today we are going to be talking about what it is really like to be self-employed. I feel like I have talked I have like business aspect of things here and there, but I have never really dedicated an episode to talking about what it is like to be self-employed. Because I feel like I've definitely talked about our content creation and everything, but this kind of applies to a lot of people who own their own businesses, who are self-employed. So I feel like there's going to be a lot to talk about and hopefully this will be useful to some of you guys, uh, especially for people who are just starting out or who might be starting out. Some things to look out for because I'm not going to glamorize it and just make it look like, oh my god, like everyone should do it because I feel like as much as it has so many pros, but it also has like, I wouldn't necessarily say like cons, but definitely a lot of things to just like watch out for or to be aware of because, you know, you never know and being self-employed comes with a lot of things that one might not necessarily know of when you're an employee of someone. Hence, that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, there are a bunch of things, so we're going to get into it. Before that, let me just give you guys a little bit of updates because I feel like last episode I recorded, that was um, before I was going to New York. That was like two, two weeks ago at least, at least two weeks ago. So it's been a minute. <laughs> so currently right now, well, right now it's pretty sunny, really nice day, hence I'm recording because for the past few days it has been raining so bad. Like it has been pouring like a lot. And I've seen like pour like like rain a lot in uh, Miami, but never this crazy. Thank God like it was not like terrible terrible and yesterday I was like, "Oh my god, like I need to go to Costco and let me just do it." What a brilliant idea, right? I don't know what was I thinking. As I was going there, like, because I took some of the, because I, was, I didn't go through the toll road, the highway, so I went through some, like, small roads or, like, neighborhood roads. But some of them were, like, flooded. It was super scary experience for me. I mean, I'm sure for people who are local here or Floridians, like, that's, like, a normal thing. I've never seen that much water because it's, like, I don't know how the drainage system works here or if there is even any drainage, some areas at least. Like the water just stays on top of the ground, like it just doesn't go down. Which is very crazy because in New York it's like even if it rains that much you would never see water piling up that much, it will never be like a few inches or even inch at all. It just doesn't happen ever because we have sewer system, it just goes through the drainage and that's just it. In here, some of the roads, it doesn't because there isn't a drainage system or there isn't a drainage system that actually works. So, here and there, you know, you never know. So, it's pretty bad. And some of the some of the roads that I was going through, I literally had to turn back and take another road because um, it was like a lot of water. I can see from the far and I was like, okay, nope, that's not happening. And also because I don't have an SUV, like I don't have a higher vehicle, it's a sedan. So Tesla Model 3 is like, yes, it's a little bit higher of the ground for a normal sedan, but it's still close to the ground. So I don't want, and it's like 90% of that vehicle is the uh, battery. So I will be screwed. So I was like, keep ta taking different routes and different turns. <sighs> it took me like, 55 minutes. It was initially like gonna take 30 minutes, 55 minutes or like an hour essentially to get to Costco and it was only like seven miles away. Pretty like in my term that was kind of like very scary obnoxious experience. Scary, not obnoxious, more like annoying too. Some parts it was annoying because so I was kind of like ugh. But some roads it was like scary. I was very scared because I've never seen that much water. Like I feel like last time I've seen something like that, I've seen like in movies or on news about it. I have never been a part of it. Just never. So it was definitely scary. But then I came home and like the next day, I was, today, which is like nice now and like Miami's like dress. Like, it's completely dry, it's totally fine. You can never tell it's even rain. I've seen videos from Fort Lauderdale or Hollandale, not Hollandale, uh, Hollywood, 
and Fort Lauderdale Airport, apparently it's like flooding, like crazy. Like there have been uh, like cars underwater or like submerged or the entire airport is shut down because they cannot move. Like the vehicles cannot move, even the planes cannot get the traction because there's so much water. And some of my friends like send me videos of it. It's like very scary. So this like definitely my and this thing is like it's so scary because like obviously insurance and some insurance don't cover it. So that's why I'm so scared of it because I ha still haven't also changed my license yet. Very very scary. Like I don't know. Like a lot to like. I don't know. Just think about sometimes. You know that's why I feel like insurance is so expensive in Florida because of the flooding and everything and it's crazy to me that this happens now and it's not even hurricane season which is I think in June or July so it's like we have some <laughs> some some way to go so I hope they fix this because it's pretty bad like amount of damage it probably cost and one of my friends literally said he had to sleep in his car because he could not go through the road to get his home and if he, he went through his car would probably be submerged and he would not have been able to go through so that is very scary like that is so scary anyways um i wish it was like more like positive note to start this update but i just like want to share with you guys my first experience as living in florida not as bad so far yet and hopefully it won't be i'm gonna knock on wood <laughs> but that's what it's been so far now let's get on to today's episode and talk about how, what it's like to be self-employed and things to look out for. Number one, this I feel like goes without saying, but maybe like someone definitely needs to hear this too. Uh, being self-employed, everything depends on you. Like literally everything. And if you do nothing, nothing will happen. Hence, nothing will work. Hence, nothing will get done. Um, unless you have employees, but nothing will work. Anyways, even even if you have employees. So let me give you guys like for instance, but also this essentially say like overall that like you have to have discipline. Because no one's gonna tell you to get up and shoot that content. No one's gonna tell you to do something that you need to do. It's all up to you. Like everything is up to you. And I feel like that is harder in the beginning because if you are been so used to like getting up in the morning, going to work, and like doing your thing, it's like, it's very consistent, you have the schedule. There is no such thing as schedule when you have, when you're self-employed. I mean, to an extent, maybe there is some things that you need to do, but there is a lot of things that it's all on, on you. Even because I don't have necessarily employees, but I have, uh, people that I have hired and necessarily hired is like I would call them my independent contractors because I hired them based on my project basis like I have two editors right now that help me edit videos for me for my YouTube channel and also for my podcast so those are the ones that essentially they're not my employees but I have them on a regular basis weekly or monthly I pay them to edit content for me but again, I have to give them the content so they can do it. If I don't do it, they're not going to do anything. And they're not my employees that so they would be like, Merce, like, you didn't send this content. You know, like, it's up to me. I have to be the one doing things. Or brand deals and everything. It's like, if you don't reach out, or when they reach out to you and you don't do anything, nothing's going to happen. Versus like, or also like, if you have brand deal and like, you have to, it's due like in 10 days or something. If you don't do it, no one's going to tell you not to do I mean, yeah, they might follow up, but some brands don't care. If you missed the deadline, you missed it, and they might not even pay you. I'm just saying, like, it happens. It's all up to you. You have to have very good discipline. And that is so hard in the beginning. And I remember in the beginning, I, I was not good at it. And I would, like, follow the... I'm good with deadlines, but I feel like I was never good with, like, in a way that I'd be like see it ahead I was always like okay I can do it now I can do it later like I have time I have time I can do it but I never thought think it through ahead of time that like why I should do it earlier or why I should do this now or what is something I should think about like it's good to be consistent with what you're doing and that is harder to do in the beginning but also I, I just feel like it also takes time too but you have to have really good discipline really really good discipline it probably 
comes with the time and experience, but that's something to think about. Because if you don't have good discipline, it's gonna be so hard for you to be doing your own thing or to be self-employed, one thing. The second thing, this is like not to scare people, but just it comes with it too. Not just being a creator overall. Being self-employed has many moving parts, such as the taxes, the whole invoice, invoices, invoicing thing, uh, contracts, PR, list just keeps going on. And this kind of connects to two, meaning like legal stuff, the business stuff, the tax stuff. All of this is on you. Like you are the one who have to be doing it. Again, you could hire people, but again, you have to be the one doing it to hire those people. And most of the time you don't have enough money to hire those people so because they cost a lot of money. So you have to do it yourself or you have to hire part-time or something like that. So taxes are pretty complicated, I have to be honest, and I'm not an accountant, PC, I'm not an accountant that I can give you advice, but I'm just saying that it's good to write things down and know what to do because if you don't have like regular W-2 job because they take your, they withheld the taxes and hence you get refund at the end of the year, that doesn't work like that when you're self-employed because you don't have those things. You pay self-employment tax, which is a lot higher than usual. Hence, most of the time you are you are paying in taxes versus like you get any refund. You usually never get a refund. Uh, Nine out of ten, you never get a refund, even if you make a lot less money because you have to be paying those taxes because you are not an employer. You are just W nine or uh, you just get some bunch of ten ninety nines. Consider self-employment. Hence, you have to pay some of those income taxes. It could be a lot. It could be harder. And also, like, unlike regular people or the people who have, like, you know, 9 to 5, sometimes you might also have to pay it, like, uh, quarterly, depending on how much you owe in taxes. Very complicated stuff. Very. I didn't know any of these in my first year. Had no idea. To this day, I'm still sometimes figuring out taxes are honestly so complicated, but like it's even more complicated when it comes to business and being self-employed. Second part, the invoices and everything. <sighs> Be consistent. This is something I recommend to people that like use a software or something to keep track of who needs to pay you or when you need to get paid because I'll, if you just say like, oh, okay, I, they will pay me at this time, no. If you do a contract, if you do a deal or something, send them an invoice later so they have your information and you also know when to get paid. Because with invoicing, like with QuickBooks or they have PayPal, I think it has the invoicing, they have Lumano, they have so many bunch uh, like invoicing systems, but make sure to have those because that's how you're going to keep track of your income and how much you will get paid. Again, because it's not like you have a salary or something, you have to keep track of your income and when is your income, when will you get paid because it's all up to you. Um, another thing is contracts. You have to really read it into detail because sometimes some brands put some little things, clause in their contract and you miss it. If you miss it, that could cost you a couple of hundred dollars or even thousand because if they ask for exclusivity, you can charge extra for it. If, if they ask for something else, they can charge extra for it. Again, this might be just a creator thing, but it's very similar with self-employed other people too. Always look at the contracts to make sure it makes sense to you because there is always at least one or two points that they mention. You could charge them more or they could take them out and you could make more money with it. Just put it out there. And lastly, PR. Again, this also depends too, but that's also up to you too, like to do marketing and PR. Because if you don't do it again, no one's gonna do it. It's all on you and um, so many moving parts. It could be very, very scary, but that's why people hire like PR companies or marketing agencies to do their job. But that's also something to think about because if you have product or if you're yourself, you're essentially marketing yourself, you have to market that as well. Besides working on your business, you have to also put your business out there so people know about your business. Hence, I'm saying there's like legal part, there's business part, and there's marketing part. So 
it could, it's it, it's hard. That's why I'm just like saying that you should definitely think that ahead before you start any sort of business. So you have some kind of like an outline or a, um or like a business or like a map that you can uh, follow and know where you're going. Number three, this is a part that that could be like a good thing or also a bad thing. Nine out of ten, you will have irregular income. I know now people have the, what is this called, subscription services that they use, and I don't say this in a bad way, but just like they have it, like they charge a subscription uh, for their content, like OnlyFans, or they, there, was, there used to be another one, um, I just forgot the name, um, but now the, the, there's so many subscription services that people can use, and they get like uh, money from it like every month and that's like very consistent amount but most of the self-employment besides that again that's a creator part it's very irregular very irregular income one month you could be making 10 to 20k next month you could be making zero and I, I, i'm not joking you could be making zero dollars very very unpredictable so you really have to think ahead all the time unlike like regular person who has like a paycheck to pay like they have they know what to expect next month because it's the same thing over and over so if you make a purchase or something you can be like okay i'm expecting this when you have when you're just self-employed no you have to invest first of all you have to invest at least 20 to 30 percent of your income for taxes and some of it also you have to kind of just save or invest because you don't know if the next month you will have the same thing even if you have like income from other things or from adsense or from a bunch of other things as a creator you never know how much you will get paid because the economy it's it's very it fluctuates all the time like every month it could fluctuate some months could be great some months could be terrible Hence, um, it's good to like, whenever you get paid something, put some of it on the side. Even if you need the money, you definitely need to save some of it too because you don't know how it's going to be next semester, not in the next semester, I mean next month. That's what I'm saying. It's not, this, this journey, this route is not for everyone because if you like stability, I don't think being self-employed is for you because there is no such thing as stability is the same sentence as self-employed because it's just so different very very different lifestyle um and it's not going to be stable for a while it could get better in the future but it's just, even like for big creators i have been hearing it's just not that stable so another thing um unless you are 26 and you will have your own self uh, you will have your insurance with your family but after the age of that you get kicked out um you're not gonna have any health benefit or employee benefits like retirement account or health insurance. Yeah, you're not gonna have any of those. So remember that, so you have to get your own insurance. You can deduct that later depending on what kind of insurance you get, but retirement, it's all you, honey. It's all you. No one's gonna, <laughs> like, unlike your employer who, uh, matches what you are putting towards your retirement account like 401k there is no 401k because you know you're self-employed you have ira like individual retirement account that you have to set up yourself so yeah it is <laughs> it is different it sucks like that's what i'm saying it's a lot on your hand uh I have to be honest, I, ha I don't have my individual retirement account. I'm probably thinking about doing it at one point. Probably should soon. But yeah, I'm just saying those are some things to think about. Because you constantly want to get ahead of your uh, like the game. So you don't worry about it in the future. But there are also so many things to consider. And this is just like one of the biggest parts. Health insurance is huge, obviously, because you want to protect your health, also yourself. But also retirement, uh, I mean, retirement is important because, you know, it's not like a regular job that you will have in your employer giving you retirement or helping you with your retirement account. 
you have to do that yourself. Essentially, you are always looking out for yourself. That's the essential part of self-employment. Literally, the emphasis is on self. <laughs> Literally that. Then other things, this is something kind of connected to what I was saying earlier, is that there are no set hours, obviously, and that's what makes it, I think, so uh, appealing to so many people, uh, that like, oh, you have your own flexibility. Obviously, you do. You really do. But that also means that sometimes, some things happen in, like, random points, which is, like, sometimes it can be a good thing, sometimes it can be also a bad thing. There are many times I was kind of like, oh, I'm on vacation or something, and I've gotten a brand deal while I was on vacation, or literally I've gotten, to an, gotten invited to an event, or gotten invited to do something, or got a collaboration request very last minute, the next day or something. Um, literally, it happens all the time. Sometimes you even receive an um, email about the collaboration, like 9 p.m., because they're companies and places can reach out to you from all over the world which is a great thing that there's so many possibilities and so much potential to make money but at the same time there are no turning off and like this is kind of sometimes becomes harder to just balance work and personal life because you just never know when to turn off because sometimes you cannot just turn it off even if you don't have like be if you even if you're just not a creator you're just self-employed or you have like, your online business if a, a customer reaches out to you or like you just start your business and customer reaches out to you and like asking you something you have to respond to them even if it is late because you cannot just be like oh it's after five i'm not responding no it doesn't work like that you have to respond you have to be on that game because that's how it works like if you don't you might lose your business to someone else and that's how it works sometimes with my job is that like whenever I get like a deal or uh, like an email from a company that wants to work with me it's better that I respond to them like the same day or is like or the same hour because I might lose that opportunity you never know you really never know because everything is up to you it's not like they're gonna wait on you you know like it could be a bunch of other creators that they want to work with Lastly, this is the part I feel like I am still debating because I'm honestly not 100% sure is the fact that it could be very challenging to just like hang out, not even hang out, maybe hang out also, but also make friends with people who have like just 9 to 5 jobs because they are constantly looking forward to their weekends and they can hang out and do stuff, but sometimes I don't have that opportunity because Obviously, because I have all this time that I can do my own thing on the weekends or weekdays. I can do whatever I want to. Not to say, like, I don't have anything to do, but I'm just saying, like, I have more flexibility. So I'm not like, oh, I'm just looking forward to for the weekend. I can literally take, like, Thursday off or Friday off if I did all the work that I need to do ahead of time. So on weekends, I might need to work. So it becomes a bit complicated over time because... I think that like I think you can make friends with anyone doesn't matter they have they don't have to necessarily have the same lifestyle and stuff but I feel like it does get sometimes it becomes uh, like very difficult to manage because they want to do things on the weekends sometimes you have to work on the weekends or you have things to do on the weekends or when you bring them to your work and they don't necessarily understand your work uh, like usual times that it has happened a couple of times that like I have brought friends to uh, like I don't know a beach or something and I was like oh I have to actually do this content and I have asked them to take pictures and some of them were kind of annoyed that I even asked them to take pictures because I'm like but this is why I came to the beach because I'm obviously going to write up all these things because it's my business expense but I'm also doing a content so I'm saying like there are so many things that that kind of gets misunderstood because it's hard for them to understand, which I also understand them too. But I feel like that's why sometimes you have to be surrounded with people who have this similar lifestyle as you. Not to say like they have to be exactly the same, but I feel like they understand you better because they know that you you have to do this, you're going through this, or um, they, um, they they get it so much better versus like someone who has just 95 and they, they have completely different style. And I would say there's a one exception to that is like there are so many people who have 9 to 5 but they also have a side hustle or they have other things that they're going on. They have more things in common with who are self-employed because you understand better each other because you know what else you're looking for. But usually lifestyle sometimes can be harder to match. 
hence it will become a, such a lonely place because again that's what I'm saying the whole emphasis in the self-employment part is self because you will be by yourself a lot like that's the whole thing I'm not saying you're gonna be like lonely but there could be those times that you're going to be lonely and that's just given um, that's why I'm like saying that like you're not gonna be surrounded with your co-workers only times that it's gonna be like per se like co-workers would be like other creators or other people who are in the th same things as like conferences like events or like some product launches that you can go to and that's when you're gonna meet other people that are in this similar industry but that's not gonna happen every day so you have to get used to the fact that you're gonna be doing many things by yourself um, at, at least in the beginning so I feel like that is something that <laughs> I wish I knew earlier because I like being around people, I like surrounding myself with people but I never realized how um, lonely it could get. Not to say like I, I don't know what I would say, like not to say like I'm like oh, regretting it but I just wish that I knew about it before. That's what I'm saying, like the whole emphasis on this self-employment part is self. <laughs> literally I know I'm repeating it but I'm just saying like it's just like that's why like it makes so much sense to it but considering all of these things that I just mentioned regardless it's such a cool job because you have so many opportunities you have so many things that you should be grateful for because of it because like it brings you so as long as it brings you joy and you get to do what you want to do and you love what you're doing I think that's what matters in every job but that's just like one thing I would say about like being self-employed that it gives you so much flexibility. Uh, it could be a con but it could be also the greatest thing uh, that you're looking for uh, when it comes to uh, your career and I think that's one thing I wanted to end it with. Uh, so I hope you guys like this episode and I hope some of these were helpful. I just want to be completely completely honest so you guys know what to search for or what to consider if you are trying to go into this category, go into this industry uh, because it's not like all rainbows and sunshine and that's why I wanted to point out that uh, it's great industry, it's great to be your own boss but there are also these things to consider so I hope you guys like this episode if you do please don't forget to rate us on Apple Podcasts or Very Gay or Podcast and I'll see you guys next week with another episode